and welcome to my video on my new digital cribbage board. A little bit of a story behind this. Uh, when the pandemic arrived earlier this year, uh, I decided that I needed to do something to account for the lockdown time. So after many years of avoiding software programming, being an IT guy, I decided to take an online course. And in doing so, I thought I would also rekindle an old love affair I had with electronics, which is what I studied at school and college. So after a 25 year break, I thought it'd be a good time to start and I mentioned it to my parents. And my parents, or my mother in particular, jumped forward and said, could you make us a digital cribbage board? To which uh, I asked why, and anybody who knows uh, the game Cribbage, you'll know that uh, to play the game, you move little wooden sticks up and down a wooden board. Now, my parents are getting older, and uh, what's happening when they play the game is they're forgetting whether they're going up the board or down the board and how many points they've got. So I thought about this for a moment, and then I decided it would be a good start project for getting back into electronics and learning programming. So what you see in front of you is uh, the finish of five months work and the board itself made by a friend of mine uh, who's made it out of a solid perspex block that has been milled out. Um, it's two, ten, uh, two uh, 20 millimeter blocks. You can see the game selector switch on the side. I've actually programmed three different games and zero, which is uh, for battery charging with power, of course, and switch for power on and off. And then on the top, you can see that it's built on NeoPixel arrays. There's four eight by eight panels and the game switches plus a white switch, which I've set for a menu system for brightness. So I turn the game on now. You can see there is a startup sequence. Test all the LEDs. Does a very bright explosion. And then we've named it DigiCrib. Um, because the game switch at the moment is set to position three on the side, it's uh, just going to roll out the uh, display for a three player game. So you can see here you've got the blue player, it's counting up on the left, the green player in the middle, and then the red player. One thing to note that on the other two games, which are, which are two player games, they're red and blue, uh, the colours always align to where the switches are because then that way, if people are playing opposite, um, they uh, are uh, looking at their, their relevant lights. If I then give a demo of the uh, brightness menu, press the button, it triggers an interrupt request, um, and then you can use the uh, green and blue button to count up or down on the brightness setting, and then you press it again, uh, which will then save the setting. And as you see, the game returns to its last position, um, so you can set the brightness while playing and then you can carry on uh, pressing the buttons. Now, uh, as a long game, you'll see that the LEDs count up and then go the other way, which by the time I get to the bottom will be a 60 LED um, uh, uh, position. And because the long game is 120 points, if I press it one more time, it resets all of those blue LEDs to white. So anybody playing now knows they're on the second run of this game. So if I now continue, you can see the white LEDs now go blue. But with the green player and the red player, they haven't completed the first run yet. Which is, this is the problem my parents were describing to me when playing with each other. They forget where they are on the board and how many times they've been round. Of course, with this board, that won't be possible. So if I just do the same with the green player, you can see that they fill in. Now, uh, how do you know if you've won? Well, I'll just scroll the blue player all the way to the end, uh, which in this game will be, like I say, 120 points. And on the 121st point, it then tells you who wins. Now, at this point, you can change the uh, game selector. If I uh, switch that to the middle position, if I caught it in time, Yep, I did, is now the two player long game. And what you'll see is the LED arrays will light up differently. So now, as there's only two players, you can see that uh, we've actually got four rows of LED. So on this game, when there's only two people, there is no whiting out of colors because they can literally just go all the way through 
to the end. If I just press a few red ones, you can see that they're, they're working. And there is no green player, obviously. Uh, and so we'll count this right to the end. And that is 120 points. And again, if I press that, it will say blue player wins. Now, again, I'm going to change the game selector switch to position one. And position one is a two player short game that should come up with there. So two player short. And again, this will lay the board out for a different game. And you see here, we've got two areas. Now as a short game, we've only got to get to the end and we'll let the red player win this time. It says red player wins. Now the last setting on the side um, is position zero, which is for battery charging. Because the Neo pixels can get really bright and I've designed the game to be able to play outside, it's actually got a whole host of electronics in it. It's got eight uh, nickel hydride um, batteries at 200 milliamp hours, sorry, 2000 milliamp hours, um, because at full brightness, this unit can draw two amps. And if they're playing a few games, they need it to last a few hours. So we have a battery charging circuit built into it and the actual switch on the side here, if I turn it to position zero, I have to turn it off and turn it back on again. What it will do is it will do its normal startup sequence. Goes through. And you may have heard that little click, which is an inbuilt relay that is switching on the battery charging circuit. Uh, and there it's then blinking two uh, of the LEDs. Uh, and that way um, we know it's in charging mode. Now, if I now turn this to one of the games, I don't have to turn it off again. It will actually um, reboot. And what you'll notice is um, it doesn't do the startup sequence. We've already gone through the uh, flash at the beginning and the name of the board, so I, I programmed it so it doesn't have to rerun that. It lays the game out. Um, Built-in panel USB connection, so we can program this and change it, which has been a good job, because as I've uh, been finally commissioning it, I've made a few tweaks to the code, and that uh, panel connection has uh, saved my life from dismantling it. The box itself, very solid. Uh, it was made by a chap called Ken Vedables from Signs Express in Norwich in the UK on his four axis CNC router machine. He's even built a battery box at the bottom, which is all countersunk um, and drilled the holes out um, for cooling. Um, so all in all, um, very, very pleased with the project and a great thanks to the Programming Electronics Academy because I wouldn't have done this if I hadn't have learned software programming for C++. Thank you.